What up, CBR fan? We back for another one. Back again, once again. Uh, yes, sir. And we got we got Kino, we got Cash Bang, uh, we got a banger for you tonight. <laughs> we got um, we got Chuck Vogel in the back waiting. Um, so we're gonna get through these intros pretty quickly because we got some info to drop on our uh, asses tonight. Man, uh, man, this is gonna be a banger. Tonight, we got some man. info for you. We got some info for y'all. We know, uh, like, I know for a fact, like eight of y'all been waiting for this show for like eight months. Y'all been asking me, and we ain't gave y'all no dates, but you know, we like coming out our sleeves. Like, you know, I have to force me. <laughs> Smegma. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right, Keto, you got anything that you want to you want to talk about? Uh, no, nah, man, it's some kind of heat boys back again. It's another one. And we appreciate everybody for pulling up, you know, joining us. Um, tonight is gonna be it's gonna be one of them ones, man. Everybody in that Dimitri, Marshall, D, Mikey, Mars, DD. Shout out to the sponsor. What's up, Tuck? No what title, up, Billy Willis. Boy? What up, everybody Dimitri? up in here? You see. Our cousin you Chris, our sponsor tonight. Look at Mike. Uh, Mike seventeen seventy six. Mike from seventeen seventy six. He came back around. We got Trey. We yeah. got Mikey Marsh. Uh who else we got? Uh I think that's it. Um, but anyway, uh yeah, Kino, you got anything you wanna say before we um, get started? I man, I really got nothing to say, man. I'm, I'm just super enthused about this show tonight, man. Oh, me too, man. <laughs> me too. Me too, my good brother. But um um other than that, man, um, I guess before we drop Chris' video, man, we got some visuals coming for y'all. We got some new visuals coming for y'all soon. Be on the lookout for that. Them Conjure kind of Heat Boys been working. We're going really, ahead and boy, drop you don't, ch- you don't chill out with your crazy old self on wrestling. Man, just, come on. You know how impatient he be? You know, <laughs> you know how impatient yeah. Phil be? Hey, man, don't be impatient tonight, man. Go ahead and drop, go go ahead, drop Chris' uh, video, the sponsor. Hey, man, we going to get through it just so, you know, we get through Shout out to Chris for being a long time sponsor, man. You know, <laughs> through all our shenanigans and foolery and time hangry. He's he's still rocking with us. We appreciate yeah. you so much, Chris. We appreciate everybody to come here and rock with us every single week. From Good Chris time. to Dimitri to Billy Boy, even though you're impatient. Uh to Didi, Noel, Tradesman, uh Good Trey, right. Mikey Tuck. Marsh. Oh, we got Salamander Tuck. here. You know, we was waiting for you to Salad. Shout out to Salad. I ain't done roasting you, Salad Man. This this might be a week for you, Salad. Uh, Tuck Man. Um, but yeah, we going You ready to get to it? Man, let's roll. Let's rock. All right, let's let's get to it. All right, so we about to bring in a true legend of the Condro game, uh, Kofi. I don't know. If we can call him a Kofi aficionado. We might have to call him a Kofi master. Connoisseur, I mean, whatever you want to put on him. I think he's, I think he's above connoisseur, man. You think he's above connoisseur? I think, I think he's a master, mm. Mas, master blender, like them, like the guys that make the the, the super expensive whiskeys. You think he's, he's a master, master splinter? He's a master splinter of Kobe out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lord you know, Zordon, Lord Zordon. <laughs> Where's he at? You know, we waiting for you to come back in, Chuck. There you go, Chuck. You were just. Where you go, now. Chuck? Ro, what up, Ro? Ro pulling up. Ro got the Mustang game on lock. Got the five point no. Hey, I saw. I went to Ro Page. Remind me of watching uh, uh, Minister Society. Shoot me up, shoot me up. <laughs> you, you think Ro robbing people with, and, and telling them about cheese? <laughs> I, I did not say Ro was out right here uh, <laughs> getting pre- pregnant women pregnant. Ro look like, Ro do not call like him. I did not say that. 
like Ro do look like he'll he'll carjack you and make you drive and he'll get some living pepper wings before you get out the car. Ro do <laughs> I'll let you drive your car just one last time. Get these chicken wings. <laughs> listen. <laughs> Listen, get get two cups of ranch. I need two cups of ranch. So you get two cups of here. ranch. Two cups of ranch for row. Two cups of ranch row. He um, said, "Man, I ain't tell you about. It. I ain't tell you to get no fries." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, we mess with you though, row. Uh, yeah, I guess we just wait for for Chuck to come back. We're just waiting for him in yeah. the ether. Just waiting for him. In the meantime, in between time, uh, what y'all got going on, man? Man, What y'all working on? For me this week, uh, man. Diddy, I see your animals. You had a, you had, yeah, you had a, you had some beautiful pictures of animals up this this week, D. No, Diddy, fancy. She be getting, she be, she be doing the nail thing and everything, bro. What happened? Diddy, fancy with it, huh? Yeah, she is. She is fancy with it. We got uh, CJ Frazier. Uh, CJ pulled up. Yeah. What's up? You got a shirt to say genius. CJ, what up, though? Cash, fry. you got a shirt to say genius, man. You gotta fight your dad, man. What the fry? Fry, right, fry. <laughs> what up, cousin Fry? In the house. Yeah, we, uh, we, we gotta we, get we, you we, back on here again, Fry. I see you in your and your racing. I see you in your racing game. So you're looking good out there racing, man. CJ, what up, Dimitri? Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna pull up in Tilly in October, Dimitri. I have some things to do this week. Some family obligations that I love handling. Yeah, we got the hashtag genius, though. You see it, you know. So we still only raise young, smart young men, bro. Yeah. Young, young champions. Yeah, young future smart leaders. Young, have some future champions, leaders you know, of the. You know, uh, uh, Future leaders of the Chi Town. Leaders no, of the not a, not a Chi Town. We gonna hopefully we be get, we get <laughs> out of here soon. Jam. I thought you said it was Chi forever, bro. I'm. It's gonna be Chi forever. It's definitely gonna be Chi forever. It's gonna be always in my heart. But you know, hey, look, man. I love like Chi. Con- the Chi don't, like, don't love me. <laughs> like the Kanye song, Home. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey look. You know, ain't nothing wrong with coming home. You know, sometimes you gotta lead the nest. You gotta lead the nest. Friend, friend, friend. Oh. You know, mommy. <laughs> You're not finna steal the whole show. Right now. You're not finna steal the whole show together. You know. Look, you know, in those eggs. <laughs> My answer, no. No Who questions said? about those. <laughs> Tuck. Who said that? Tuck. Tuck. Hey, man. Tuck, be quiet over here, bro. Soon. Be quiet. Be quiet. Like, like, like I be answering your memes, bro. There's something wrong with you or the memes you said, Tuck. That's what, I, that's what I've come to learn about you ever since I've given you uh, my Facebook uh my Facebook account. Hey, Chuck, can you hear us? Okay. Finally, I can hear you, man. I've been doing everything. I've been doing everything I could possibly think of. Damn. Yeah, I think it's still buffering out right now. But but we but we got you on now. Finally, you good now? I think it's good now. Yeah. But it's good. It's good for now. Good for now. That's all we need. Good for now. Good for now. When you uh, when do when did you paint yeah, the face green? We're gonna rock like this. Say that again, Kino. <laughs> uh, when did you paint your face green? Paint my face green. I don't know. It looks a nice shade of green, doesn't it? <laughs> it must have barroom thing. Yeah, I like that. You fit right in with that. Hey, we appreciate Be you not- so much for covering on, Chuck. Uh, no worries. Appreciate rocking with a legend tonight, and uh, we're gonna have a good time tonight. I don't know about all that legend stuff, but yeah, I'm here. Oh no, you are you're definitely a legend. You uh-huh. people, people don't whisper your name. People say people say your name out loud. Chuck Vogel. People, people uh, know who you are Chuck. I appreciate that. 
And you've been asking and they've been asking right, behind the scenes for you. They've been asking for you to come on get you on the show. Like, hey, where where is Chuck at? <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, man, people I have would... been asking about getting you on the show since 2022, Chuck. You know, if you guys had taken like put like a, a a wager out there and taken bets on whether I would actually be here or not, you could have made a lot of money. <laughs> Because people would have bet a hundred, a hundred to one. They'd have bet a hundred to one. Vogel doesn't show up. <laughs> hey, but you did. You showed up. And I, I we did. Appreciate you for showing we, up for we, us. We, we would have cast them tickets for sure. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, but it's 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 all good. Travis, where are you located? Uh, I'm located in San Antonio. Oh man, that's a hurt hot spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess yeah. so. If you want to go look for desert animals, like, uh, what was it last week that they had three dead rattlesnakes that they put in our neighborhood page? Like, I guess they coming out now and people hitting them. So, yeah, wow. we got a lot of rattlesnakes. I got, I think I got a rattlesnake in my backyard in my wood pile. Uh, because I got a wood that, pile for like a. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't mess with it. Uh, well, I know there's the been, a, no. there's been a lot of uh. There's been a lot of uh, San Antonio Zoo guys that that did a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I mean the 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 herp room that they have at the San Antonio Zoo is actually is actually kind of small. Um, and, hmm. and and I know that there's a lot of guys that they that are associated and affiliated with the San Antonio Zoo. Uh, yeah, but you wouldn't think so with the size of it. But they always talk about stuff that the San Antonio Zoo is doing. With the snakes, uh, in uh, I guess they call it hill country around here, so they're out well, been, here looking for been, rattlesnakes and stuff all the time. It's been years and years ago, uh, since I knew people that you know worked at the San Antonio Zoo, her department, or or uh, or uh, were affiliated with it somehow. And I know that back in the day, you know, there's a lot of good stuff going on there. But I have no idea yeah. what's up with it these days. I think that their biggest focus right now is 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 the ringtail cat e epidemic that we have here, because um, they thought that there weren't any many of them, but apparently there's yeah. a lot of them. I've got two. I've got two alone that I've seen in my neighborhood. So we got ringtail cats running around here. Ringtail cats. Yeah. yeah what is that? that? They're like these little. Um, they look like little lemur things, but we got really? a bunch of them. Yeah, you look at them. They destroy y'all. They destroy y'all local wildlife. I bet no, they are. So we we're destroying the wildlife and the land, and we are discovering how many there really were out here because they're kind of elusive. Like the wow. one time I seen one, the first time I seen one, it was in the front yard, and I was drunk. <laughs> and I was just like, I didn't see what I think I saw. And like, the second the time I saw. <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> the second time I saw one, um, what I saw one in the front yard, uh, on the fence across the street, and then my one of the neighbors had caught one on one of the cameras, and uh, I guess as 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 we expand more and more, we're starting to realize how many of these things were actually around here. No, they're not ocelots; they're ringtail cats. Wow! Uh, well, I had no idea. idea. You should catch one, bro, they, and keep it as a pet. No, nah, man. man. People people having their addicts, man. They tearing up people's addicts and everything, man. Try to domesticate uh, one. Yeah, we just got a bunch of a bunch of damn regular cats running around everywhere that eat my anoles and they eat eat all the fence swifts and uh kill all the snakes. I, I hate cats. Yeah. I saw I hope you guys aren't big cat people, but I hate cats. Ah, uh, ooh. Duh. No, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a not a big cat you. person. I'm, I'm a salute you, Chuck, because I can't stand them either. The only ones I like is big cats, like panthers. But like, yeah, me too. These, these normal cats around that walk around your house, uh, stepping in pee boxes and come trying to jump on your face, I can't stand them. <laughs> alley cats, yeah. you don't like that? You, you <laughs> is an alley cat, though. Hey, look, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> First off, I'm an atomic dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dog. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> also, Trey, speaking of ocelots, they actually found two ocelots running across the street in South Texas recently. Really? So the ocelots, yeah, we we got we still got ocelots in Texas, man. 
Man, I know they used to be there for sure. A lot of them. Yeah, uh, I bet you a bunch of them got turned into gloves and little hats. Oh, uh, I'm sure. But yeah, if I move to Texas, I'm going. I'm gonna have me a pet ocelot. You can come to Florida and have one. <laughs> y'all got, y'all, see, Florida is like a whole nother world, Chuck. Yeah, it is. And, and it's not no, a real no, good no. world lately. But you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not a real good it's not a good world lately. Wait, what, I mean, on that. what you what you mean, Chuck? What you mean by that? Uh well, you know, you watch the news and all that, don't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then, then. You know what's going on in Florida, don't you? <laughs> yes. Are we talking? Yeah. Are we talking about? Are we talking about Florida man things? Or are we talking about uh, Burmese no. pythons? No, we're I talking about politics. Those. We're talking about yeah. politics and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Same it is pretty Chicago. negative, but but for oh, wildlife, yeah, yeah. yeah. For wildlife and all that, it's a really good place to be. Oh yeah, man. DeSantis is crazy and short at the same time. Where in Florida are you, Chuck? I'm in north central Florida, like thirty miles west of Gainesville, University of Florida. I'm about okay. thirty miles west, sort of out in the middle of nowhere. So you from Gainesville, so you grew up with Gatorade. Well, I grew up up in North Carolina, and then I'm Gainesville. Go to school, never left because there were like all these damn people here. This to be for if you were like into reptiles in like 1980. Um, you know, Eugene was here, and Elliot Jacobson, and uh, there was just so many people here back then, and uh, I just couldn't get out of here, I couldn't leave. Hey, I think it's home. I think it's you got to stay here. I've been here 40 years, so I doubt I'm going to go anywhere anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's. I, I was listening to uh, I don't know, John Irby or somebody on one of the shows, and they were talking. He's in, uh, who's in Idaho? They're in northern Idaho. Uh, he was on one of the shows a while back. That was Ryan Young. Yeah. And you know, man, I was listening to some of the challenges with like you know, fifty below and a hundred degree weather, and all that. And the good thing about about where I am is that it's ideal humidity, it's ideal temperatures, and and it's just really easy to to breed snakes here. Because uh, you know, I I cut off the uh, central air and uh, to the snake room, and it's just easy to keep it. Uh, pretty optimal you know mm. just yeah. because uh, just because of the, uh, the weather yeah just the weather and humidity and all that makes it really easy to breed snakes here so do you do you ever have to spray or find the need to spray where you live yeah i i do but not nearly as much as everybody else i i know of you know i, I might miss once a week or you know, if somebody's getting ready to shed, if if the if they're opaque, I'll I'll make sure and mist a little bit more. But uh, yeah. man, I don't I don't do a lot. I mean, you know, really, I I I pretty much uh, let them do their thing and uh, check on them every day, and uh, I, I don't do a whole lot with them. I mean that that's uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so Chuck, we're going to get into the Chuck Vogel story. So, uh, let's get a quick intro. Uh, we're going to go through your full history. Um, uh, but can we get a quick intro for the people who, um, oh they don't God. know who Chuck is? How much time we got? Hey, we got Chuck, all the time. We got... This is your show, baby. This is your show. <laughs> Chuck is your world. We just live if we go right over now. on this show, we are okay with it. It doesn't bother us. That's fine with me. Take as much time as you want to. We gonna treat you like a good pastor. You take your time, pastor. Take your time. All right, all right. Travis, did you see the? You, did you see the picture of me as a little kid with a giant water snake? I actually have that on. I actually have that as a question to ask you about, and I'm actually gonna pull the picture up. Hold up, yeah. Man, I saw that 
And when I was like, uh, as early as I can remember, you know, as, as early as I was old enough to like walk out into the backyard in the woods by myself, uh, I had a next door neighbor that was the same age and, uh, you know, we grew up next to each other and we were both just born with this, this strange, uh, like, you know, thing with snakes going on, you know, we were into them. And we happened to have this guy about five houses down the street, uh, Ed Gloka, who, uh, man, Ed was a, a guy that uh, I guess he knew some people at the Riverbank Zoo. And uh, he had a, a basement and a garage that was, there it is, it was packed full of uh, yeah. every kind of snake you can think of. I mean, this is like the uh, mid-60s or, or like, you know, 67, 66. He had like uh, emerald tree boas and mangrove snakes and ocelots and monkeys and anything you can think of. And wow. uh, yeah. that Ed, Glo he, he was about 10 years older than we were. And uh, Ed Gloka is, I mean, he had a lot to do with it for sure. But uh... hello, I think we lost you, Chuck. We took back in. Remember, remember uh, when you get back in, remember Egg Loca. Egg Loca. Stuff at. Yeah, this was this this from those. Was, he's he's finna get the you know you heard him, he's finna get the preaching, man. You know? Yeah, get the preaching get get the preaching to the church. Preaching the word. Alan, See, it's good. To, on, it's good to have like nice people in your neighborhood down the street with basements because he found snakes. And, this is a lot of situations that turn out like that. It depends on what neighborhood you're in. If you're in Wisconsin, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Yeah. You got to be careful with the neighborhood with the basement. <laughs> Wisconsin, especially. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but so imagine that, though. Imagine that, though. Like you and your neighborhood homie. You know what I'm saying? Y'all passionate. Y'all infatuated with these snakes. And a couple yeah. of houses down for y'all, dude. This dude got a whole basement full of houses, man. He's just like, yo, like, yo, who is this man? Who sent him to us? Bro, be kidding, Kitty Heaven, <laughs> <laughs> for real. Oh man, if if I had a neighbor like that when I was a kid, my mom she would be asking a ton of questions, like, why are you hanging out with this dude down the street? Bro, I, don't I was believe that you. I, bro, I was that neighbor. I was that neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you would have came out house and you probably would have either got the cat would have came and rubbed it rubbed up against you bit by the dog you would have saw some rabbits some birds would have chirped at you you could have fed fish you know what i'm saying all at the same time gerbil you like shout out dr doolittle oh bro we was up in that thing though my mom my mom would love having <laughs> you'd be having freestyle battles with the with the uh with the cats in the house no you make alley them whistle alley cat Maybe. game it be like um, Ace Ventura, Bet Detective. When he coming home from work, and he just all, all the animals come out of nowhere. Bro. With your shirt off, <laughs> just call the animals with his shirt off. <laughs> I don't want to be around though. He's going with my shirt off, bro. That, that whip, <laughs> whip you with that tail. That's gonna hurt, man. Oh man. hell no, man! It look like I came every, off. I'm gonna die, bro. Every time I get close to a guana, I feel like it's. I, I might need to hit it with something. <laughs> Hit it in the head real quick, cause them tails, man. You don't. It's not like a dog, bro. Like a dog give you a warning. You know, a warning with no iguana. Just get whipped. Red dude. Skin no, bust open. You look, but usually you could tell when they move their leg. They have legs. They have legs. Start moving away from you, and you know that they from the they cock back. <laughs> <laughs> so feel good. Well, we wait to get Chuck back in. Yeah, while well, we wait to get checked back in, we're gonna entertain y'all a little bit, man. I want I do want an ocelot though. Bro, like I'm gonna see you the picture of the two ocelots they found. I was like, damn, those things are beautiful. It was a quick shot of the you could probably find it on the on the internet real quick, but it was two of them they found them in South Texas. Uh and I was just like, damn man. I know it's somebody running that, around here right now looking for them. I wonder, I but you know. Uh, we can ask uh, the boys from GM Reptiles if they got ocelots near where they live. I doubt it, but we can ask them. Man, we do, we might need to go to the south, go south for the board again, and check in with the. Yeah. We might have to. We might have to bring GM Reptiles back. Well, we are gonna bring them back. Good. 
Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Do I still have to get huge? I don't know. Oh, Earl, what's up, Earl? I didn't even see you say what's up. What's up, Earl? Earl. But um, do I still have to get huge? Honestly, no. They I'll don't be, get very I'll big. Be, I'll be speaking if I if I, I'll be speaking out of turn. I don't know. I just not want one. They don't get very big, bro. They don't get very big. I want big it from a baby though, so I want me want to be able to train it. You know, like, hey, look, come here, little Aslan. You just gonna pull up. You gonna pull your fitted off and you just have it jump on muggers. Uh, <laughs> ah, you can't rob me. <laughs> yeah, sure. cat in the hat. <laughs> the alley cat with the cat in the hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want any? Did Did he, you, you want everything? Did he, all you really gotta do is go outside and go grab one. Yeah, just go grab one. They just see what you got. Y'all get the kill. You can just go right. Have Steve with the Jeep go capture you one. Tell G to climb, you, climb up a tree, get a rope. Y'all can kill him now. So just wait till they cold, get one, you know, set up a little cage for it. If you, you catch go, one, you I heard that if you I heard you, if you catch an iguana in Jacksonville, it comes already with gold teeth. Um and it screams Duval. It responds whenever you yell Duval. It just responds. <laughs> and then it took the wee wee. If you, you be you don't be careful. The <laughs> <laughs> These balls make sudden. Dylan, you What's already up, know. Dylan? Dylan, you already know. How, uh, you know what I'm saying? We got a. Uh, we always got the shades on. I got the Louis on at night, man. The Louis Millionaires. What's up? Louis, Louis. Kick out of wear the Louis at nighttime. Ain't no other way, man. You know? I think the only time I took these off was when I had the. You know what I'm saying? I had the when I had the shiesty on that time. I had the. You know. Things have to get, you know. <laughs> you know, I had to take the gloves off. <laughs> I had to get out of my body, get out of little character, but I got out there, you know. When you wear the sh- when you wear the shiesty with the sunglasses, do you put the sunglasses on over the shiesty, or do you put the sunglasses on? Would you like to see and- a demonstration of how I wear the, sh- the glasses with the shiesty? Yeah, let me see how you put the All shiesty right, on with the, with the glasses, on. man. <laughs> To get him a demonstration of the shifty. I forgot to tell you sound off. Y'all just heard all y'all just heard all the TV and uh y'all gonna get this authentic work. Man, I hope you guys have been having this under control. We oh, have you'll you see a demonstration of Keto. Keto put the shifty like on. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna put the shifty on with the sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> man, he's he, you about to see me up real ignorant right now, Chuck. Apparently, I keep <laughs> losing my signal, man. Hey, it's, 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 hey, at a certain point in time in the show, the signal just stays. So don't worry about it. If it happens again, it's okay, Chuck. We'll work All right. We'll safety with you. All right. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Keto. <laughs> <laughs> You know what in the hell are you I doing? Just, right, they just want the visual. I just wanted to give a I'm not gonna do the show like damn, that. Damn ninja guy. Yo, you, exactly. you look like you like you rob people at sporting events, man. <laughs> Don't say that, man. Stop it, man. Jesus. I love it though, man. All right, so Listen. look, Chuck, you was an Ed Glocker uh basement, you know what I'm saying? Just just bugging man. out. Ed Gloco was a crazy son of a bitch. He he had, uh, I mean, it was amazing the stuff that he did with animals that long ago. And, um, you know, I credit him with, with a lot of, uh, you know, getting me started. But, um, yeah, when I was in high school, I, when I was a senior in high school, um, you know, we were, he had an estuary pet shop in Winston-Salem, and uh, which was all reptiles. And, um I used to sell some things for him, like um, uh, I used to sell stuff for him. And, uh, and and one weekend I went to give him the money from the stuff I was selling for him. And he was kind enough to go to the ABC store and get me a bottle. And uh, 
next day was Saturday, and then Sunday. <laughs> just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait a minute, just wait, just wait. So Sunday, Sunday, you know, my dad came and was calling me, called me, and he was kind of somber, and I was like, uh-oh. And uh, he said, Ed, uh, Ed Gloka died last night. You know, he wrecked his Jeep and they found him underneath it. And uh, that was like in, I, oh, I don't damn. know, 1979 or something. Yeah. Oh, damn. It rocked me, man. I had never known anybody that died. And uh, I had just seen him the day before. And uh, it was damn, a. That's, that's terrible. I had a hard time dealing with it. And, and you know, what I decided was that. Okay, I'm just going to carry him with me, you know, because uh, I, you know, every time I, I got a new snake or went went out field hunting or something, you know, I decided, well, I'll just carry him with me. You know, he can, he can live life through me. And um, you know, dope, Chuck, man. I, think man. Him, I think of him all the damn time. And, and Ed uh, Gloka is on him. Ed Gloka yeah. is. Yeah, he was an amazing guy. He Rest used to go to o he used to go to Okatee and he would like road cruise at like sixty miles an hour, and he'd see a damn damn corn snake and like slam on the brakes and card be spinning around. <laughs> 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 he was a maniac. He he was crazy, but uh, but he was a great guy and put up with us little kids. You know, we were a little pain in the ass kids to him at the time. But hey, he put but up. Ed Gloco, man, if y'all got, if he got any family, and y'all stumble upon this any time in life, or whenever y'all see this, man, just know that y'all father, uncle, whatever he is to y'all, he was a good dude, man. He, he was, left he an impression on this dude. man's life. Absolutely. He lives on. Yeah, he lives on. He'll he'll live on as long as as we live on. But uh, yeah, every, every now and then I see his family when I go home for Christmas or something. But. Uh, yeah, then I so then I I went I went and uh slept in the back of my car in Okatee for a year because I just wanted to go hunt snakes for a year. So I, I didn't have any money. But you was living life though. But I was living life in the back of the Dotson, you know, I was in snake I was in snake heaven. Back of the dots, and then I'd have to like take my big ass snake cage out of the back seat with a Burmese python in it or or whatever at the time, and so I'd have room to sleep. And uh, you know, I got to know a bunch of the local guys, Todd Ivy and Benji Hankla, and a bunch of the the local people that actually grew up there or lived there. And um, I spent a year hunting snakes and working landscaping and working at a horse farm. Uh, doing whatever I could do to make mo enough money to eat and, and you know buy buy what I needed. Hey uh, Chuck, I, I, Chuck, this is the first time we've ever heard somebody so dedicated to to herping that they will live in their car for a year to do it. Chuck, you a legend, bro. You're a legend. Burmese Python, bro. He was it, living there with a Burmese Python. It wasn't just a car now. It was a damn Datsun 510. And Datsun okay, 510, the, the don't, Datsun 510. They, they don't have a big back seat, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> with a Burmese, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had a Burmese. I had a big-ass Burmese that I hauled down there with me. And, uh, yeah, I, I did what I had to do. And, and eventually, uh, Todd Ivey, who's a very cool guy that has lived there for – I don't know, since sometime in the 70s, uh, he saw me like one day going to work. He saw my car like kind of backed up in the woods on a, a vacant lot. And he, he came up and said, well, well, you know, what the hell are you doing? And yeah, I, like said, I, 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 said, I said I was sleeping until you woke me up. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, he had his wife and 50 million snakes and, uh, and uh, like a, a one-year-old kid, maybe two-year-old kid. And uh, he let me sleep on his couch from that point on uh, until I got a job at the at the horse farm there on Hilton Head Island. And then I slept in the barn and a little. I've been to Hilton Head. Barn. Yeah, I paid my dues there. And uh, you were and the then eventually, phone, Chuck. eventually, eventually, I got down to to Gainesville to to do something with my life. I decided I I had to do something. 
And uh, they had like the Santa Fe teaching zoo in Gainesville, which is like the only teaching zoo in the world at the time. And uh, so I came, moved to Gainesville. My dad hauled me down here and, and, uh, and got me, uh, it supported me long enough to get started there. And um, so that was kind of cool. And I met uh, at the teaching zoo, Fred Antonio was the assistant curator and then the curator. And Fred Antonio is a guy that um, he used to work at the San Antonio Zoo for a while. And he worked at the Dallas Zoo for a while, I think. Um, okay. He was a major guy. He had uh, uh, billions of every color eyelash viper and uh, lateralis and Niger bearded. Uh, but main, his main thing was Bushmasters. He, he was one of the first people to captive breed Bushmasters. No. Um, and of course, Eugene was was there. As soon as I got to Gainesville, I you know met Fred, and Fred said, "Oh, there's this guy Eugene Bissett. You got to go check out his collection." And uh, when I went over to, to see Eugene for the first time in 1980 or or 80 or 81, uh, he had this uh, like a, a, a immaculate lab with like 200 or so rhino vipers and. Um, uh, gaboons and puff adders mainly rhinos and he had like uh i mean it was like a laboratory he had he had data cards on each each uh each each uh compartment of each rack and he recorded everything he recorded like how much the meal weighed and how much the the crap weighed when they defecated uh you know when it ate Sounds like mikey marsh oh man he was he was anal retentive about that <laughs> And, so um, wait a second. So so you met Eugene Bissett in 1981. You that's how long you you, you known him? Like you? Yeah, yeah. You know? He didn't have he didn't have any chondros at that time. He oh, had yeah. he he had he had gaboons and rhinos and puff adders. That was it. So this was before wow. he was oh, uh, ophiological service and everything. Yeah, that was before ophiological be. services. Yeah. Okay. And you know Eugene Bissett when Rick James was still hot out here. In Rick the James. That's how long you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick Chuck. James, my brother. You said that you have been to a lot of parties. Yeah, yeah. Rick James was hanging out. Rick James was hanging out with, uh, with uh, what's his name's brother? Um, uh, uh, who? <laughs> Eddie Murphy. Yeah, he was hanging out with uh, uh, what was his name? The other Murphy, his brother's name. Charlie Murphy. Charlie, Charlie Murphy. Murphy. Hell yeah, he was hanging out with Charlie Murphy. And uh, man, yeah, did you, did you ever watch those skits on uh, on uh, uh, Chappelle show? <laughs> Chappelle yeah, show that's skits. Just, <laughs> <laughs> that's just you name, and Eugene Bissett. Like that's my name's Rick Rick James, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> those are the, those are the funniest damn things I've ever seen in my life. But oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Eugene at that time he was he was kind of like uh, I think uh, Tracy Barker was living there at the time. Damn. And, uh, and yeah, then later Tracy went went back to Texas and married Dave. And um, sometime in like the early, early 80s, uh, I don't know what happened with all the, uh, the gaboons and rhinos and all that. Some, e either there was some kind of uh, virus that wiped a bunch out or I don't know how he went from that to the big ass pythons. He went from that to breeding <laughs> big ass pythons. And, um, <laughs> He built he, he built he built all these incredible gigantic cages and and he built he bred like um uh you know the the uh, big Australian pythons I can't think of the name of scrubs um, scrub pythons yep and and giant Burmese and retics and and all that stuff um and uh, that went on for a while. And I guess at that time he started getting getting into the he started getting into the chondros with Trooper, who was a good friend of his. And um, you know, I, re I I remember going over to Eugene's and he was doing this project with uh, Van Myrop, uh, LHS Van Myrop. Yeah. 
yeah. and um, they were trying to like uh, uh, you know get a handle on the uh, monitor maternal incubation and then transfer that over to over to uh, you know captive incubation. And I remember he had like all these damn big mason jars with like gravel and a layer of water and some other shit in them, and then a couple eggs. And I remember thinking, good God. You know, yeah, that's really cool, but good God, you can do that. I, I'm, I'm going to keep breeding my temple vipers and eyelash vipers, the things that have live young. Because <laughs> uh, at the time, you know, the, the uh, I mean, those were all wild um, chondros at the time. And, you know, incubating the eggs was a big problem. And he had yeah. all these fancy ass nest boxes and, and, you know, the artificial, you know. <laughs> artificial hadn't come into a prim, uh, the, the prim, No, and the, I the, mean, the word I'm looking for, but it hasn't. It, it, it ain't coming to. It what, hadn't what, come what, what, to it, fruition. It yeah. hadn't come to fruition. There you go. It was the early days, yeah. And he had, it, you know, there'd be a thermometer, glass thermometer sticking in the top of these damn jars, and uh, I already just remember thinking, "Good lord, you know what a what a lot of trouble." But uh, I feel they like you, you probably saw all that stuff, and you're probably just like like a normal dad, just like, "What the hell is all this shit?" What? Is well, this? I, I was just like looking at it from the point of view of a, a herb guy who who you know just couldn't imagine dealing with anything that was that pain that big of a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> it just seemed like way too much work. And, you know, eventually, uh, you know, he started getting it under control and producing chondros and, and he was the man. Um, and I, I remember in like 1985, uh, we started the Gainesville uh, Herp Society in Gainesville. And um, Fred Antonio and me and Ken Benfield started the Gainesville Herp Society, which grew into a big damn deal. Uh we had speakers every once a month and put out like wow. a 30 page, 32 page newsletter. And um, it, it was the biggest one next to the Chicago Herb Society, I think. Um, but it brought a whole shitload of people together. You know, Walter Offenberg, the monitor dude, was at UF at the time. And um, Van Myrop and Bill and Kathy Love were always coming up. Uh, and Greg LaPera from the Alligator Farm. Uh, Elliot Jacobson, uh, you know, her, her bed extraordinaire, um, and Bern Bechtel, who was a guy in Valdosta, not far from here that, uh, pretty much invented the albino corns and the, and the scaleless Lindheimers and all that. Uh, and George Van Horn, who was doing extractions at, at Reptile World, uh, in St. Cloud. Crutchfield would, was here all the time. Uh, Wayne Hill, back when Wayne Hill was not the Wayne Hill he is today. Well, he sort of was actually, uh, but just a bunch of people. I mean, it was just a, uh, a whole bunch of hurt people. It was a hurt hot spot. And, uh, so there was just no way I was going to leave here at that time because I kind of had it made. And you um, founded it. I, well, I founded the Herp Society, co-founded it. And then, you know, I was like production yeah. coordinator for the newsletter and uh, went out and uh, uh, eventually was pre vice president, president, and um, uh, went out to the schools and did presentations at the schools and all that. Um, how did you come that, with, how did you guys come up with the different uh, creative ideas for your, for your weekly magazine? That you, I mean, your monthly magazine that you were putting out. So we would go, our, 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 all the business got done at this little bar called the banana boat. <laughs> 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 and all the, all the people that, that made it happen would get together at the banana boat. You know, we'd get together once a week just for the hell of it. But, you know, we would sit down and make a list of, you know, what speakers we want to try to get and what kind of articles, who, who we can get to write some articles for the newsletter that month. And, um, you know, we just sat around and, and Fred knew everybody. Fred knew so many people. And uh, there were so many people there with, at the University of Florida and just living in Gainesville and around Gainesville 
that uh, it was easy to put together like a speaker series and, and get articles for the newsletter. So it was easy for a long time. It was piece of cake. And um, at that time, I was like breeding eyelash vipers and um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, red pygmy rattlesnakes and a, a lot of venomous stuff. A lot of arboreal venomous stuff, but, you know, also some some non-arboreal venomous stuff. And um, always Okatee corn snakes, which I'm thrilled to see Matt and uh, uh, Patrick and all these other guys were whooping out their, uh, their Okatee corns. <laughs> Yeah, we had Sony. We had Sony Raju on. He was talking yeah. about the corn too. Man, if we had a visual, I was going to show you a, a, an Okati corn that, that is how Okati corns ought to be. Uh, but we'll have, to do, we, we'll have yeah, to do that. We'll have to do that. We got a visual. We're going to get you on the back end. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it again. But yeah. um, so uh, I was not a chondro guy. Rico, I met after we started the Herp Society. Rico worked at the Bowery Park Zoo and at that time and and he would come up for all the herp, herp meetings and, and uh, speakers and all that and uh, Rico was just the nicest damn person in the world and um, you know I, I headed off with him right away and uh, you know I remember when he got his first first chondro or two through Eugene and um, uh, and uh, one, one time, one, not one weekend he brought with the all Florida herp conference was coming up that we hosted with the Florida museum. And, uh, Rico came up from Tampa and brought this, um, just gorgeous little Puerto Rican girl with him who was much like 10 years younger than I am. But <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it was like, it was like, she, she was a, drink, bro. she was a, <laughs> She was a dozen at the zoo and, uh, you know, and she was really into snakes. And uh, so Rico brought her up and he also brought a couch in the back of his pickup truck. So he'd have a place to sleep. Because uh, my, my, my house, my house, my house, women and couches and trucks, man, <laughs> there, there, were, there were about like, there were about like 15 people staying at my little three bedroom house cabin in the woods. And uh, it, it was kind of wild. But anyway, uh, I fell in love with the little Puerto Rican girl. Okay, sorry. Sorry, all right. Keep going. You keep going. <laughs> Travis, is like, Travis is like, keep going. Keep going. And Keno's like, stop. I want to talk about the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just glossed over that. You tried to gloss over that. Wait, yeah, what did like, I gloss like, over? Like the cabin. Like you're gonna have to finish the story about the girl. Oh, you gonna talk about oh. this cabin in the woods that you was living so, in. Like you so my, 15 people in this cabin. So my cabin in the woods. My cabin in the woods. In the woods like okay. like a couple years earlier when I was it, going through the zoo program at at uh, Santa Fe College. Uh, my my. Herpetology teach uh, a professor, and the uh, uh, he taught vertebrate zoology. He was like an old hippie guy that had it made, had a great job there, and he owned like a house, a cabin sort of house on seven acres, and then he got to buy the house on the five acres next door to him, and so he had two houses, and he and his wife lived in only one of them. And um, I needed a place to live at some point. And he said, well, you know, we'll rent you our house for cheap, you know, it's just so we need because we need somebody to live in it. So I said, OK, no problem. And uh, I, I, mean, I paid him like nothing rent to live in that beautiful sorry, like sorry. it was you like know, a, you, you ever thought about writing a book about your life, sir? man, at, when I was younger, I did. But, you know, I, I just I. I, I, it's too late for that. You know, it's too late for that. Chuck, <laughs> no, look, we, no, we no, only no. like 20 minutes into this conversation. <laughs> Chuck, man, look, I could, I we could, I could do this for about 40 minutes. <laughs> We hadn't so, started talking about snakes yet. <laughs> no, we got, we got, we got, we got to switch it back into freak mode. And, right. So you, you was on the, you was, so you was, Puerto Rican you was at, yeah, you was Aaron Rico's Puerto Rican chick. All right, go ahead. So, so, <laughs> so I, I was actually, there was a point, there was a point to all that. 
uh, because <laughs> since I fell in love with the little girl who was like, you know, in high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, bad. I, the, the Wyclef job bad dad all singing Maria Maria. Uh, <laughs> you, you have no idea. You have no idea. Wow. But so it ended up that I started driving down to Tampa every weekend. The minute I got off work, I headed down to Tampa uh, to see my little girl down there. And uh, she lived with her parents. So, you know, we had to meet up at Rico's apartment. And and Rico would just, Rico gave me a key and said, man, I, I, I got to work. <laughs> he, he, said, he said, I got to work. Here's the key, you know, make yourself at home. And so I, I did. I did. And, and I lived oh. there. I lived there like Friday, Saturday and Sunday for like over over a year. And uh, I was like, I was like his weekend roommate. And uh, of course, <laughs> he said of course, we had his apartment to ourselves, you know, over the weekend because he was working at the zoo the whole time. And uh, he, he would eventually get home and we'd hang out and go out to eat and all that. But uh, so that's kind of how I met Rico through the Herp Society and 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 Sorry. through him, through him bringing this this uh, little girl up to Gainesville. Uh, and you know, so you, end I, up, you, so you read me, you meet Rico, you end up taking his girl from him. No, it wasn't his girl. No, 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 no. It wasn't his girl. <laughs> no, it, it was just a, a little girl that was like being a little docent at the zoo. And I'm okay, sure okay, that Rico, right. I mean, she was, she was very attractive. <laughs> and, and I, I, I'm sure that Rico probably had some impure thoughts, but it wasn't his girlfriend. He he just right. decided she wanted she wanted to come up to the her uh, conference, and he just he decided he would bring her. Her parents let her go, and he brought her up here. Okay. So I didn't I didn't take her from him. I just like took her when really no one should have because she was very young. Uh, but that's how I that's how I got to sort of live with Rico for for a year, hard week. Um, so he just door dashed you a girl, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, "I'm gonna come bring some of my candles and uh." Yeah. Like, it he like, he, it he did like that. He, was a woman. he was, did was, that <laughs> well before DoorDash. Was this so? Was she? She was working at the zoo as well, right? She was work. She was volunteering at the zoo. Yeah. Okay. I don't think she was old enough to work there at the time, and and she was like a, a zoo docent. I don't think the docents get paid; they're just like volunteers. But her thing was her thing was snakes. She was really really into snakes, and um, which is why he brought her up to the to the herb conference, and um. So that that's really how, you know, first I met Rico through the Herp Society and then I, I, I became his roommate for over a year because of her. And I sort of over that year watched him get two and then three and then four chondros. That was that was the beginning of his chondros. And um, and then, you know, a couple four a couple more years go by and eventually uh, Eugene was passing the torch on to Rico, you know. And, um, uh, more time went by and, you know, you know, the rest is history. Eventually Rico was the Condro guy and, uh, you know, he was, he moved up to, uh, Signal Mountain to work at the Chattanooga Aquarium. And, and then when he had enough, uh, enough Condros, I guess, to, to support him, he quit, the uh, uh, aquarium and did Signal Hurt full time. But um, uh, I was not really a chondro guy, you know. I, I I was I was like really into this Waggler Eye project <laughs> because nobody was able to figure out how to keep uh, Waggler Eye alive, the Temple Vipers alive, much less breed them. And um, I built this crazy damn. Uh, I drilled holes in the floor of my little cabin and. Uh, made a, a rain system where I could rain on them for days at a time. And, uh, they came to life and they, they lived, they shit, they bred. Um, 
And uh, a couple of years in a row, I got litters of, of little temple vipers, which are just the most gorgeous things in the world. So you and, were the first one uh, in the United States producing these? There was a zoo that uh, there was one of the Texas zoos that had I, I'm not clear on whether it was a gravid female that they got in that gave birth. Okay. I think that it, that was the case. So if that was the case, yeah, I was the first one to actually, you know, breed them in captivity. And nice. uh, that was kind of cool. They I, I wrote a little article about that that was in the Vivarium oh, yeah. magazine. Um, somebody posted that on, uh, nice, clear pictures of that on my, uh, uh Facebook page, which is kind of my website since I never actually got a website together. Um, I mean, but you got Instagram now, if you use it, that's where all yeah. your, your promo videos were. Really? You didn't see any of your promo videos, Chuck. No, no, no. I Travis, the only time that I've gone to my Instagram, which my brother, my older brother signed me up. He's like, e Chuck, it's not that hard. He said, here, give me your phone. And, like, you know, he tapped away and tapped away and tapped away. And then and we posted a couple pictures of, of the Kofi Owl. I haven't been back to that. I haven't been on Instagram since that Christmas, which was like several years ago. So I don't have I don't have any idea what's on it. You should go on there. I say within the next, uh, probably go on there. Maybe probably tomorrow morning. What's on there? Oh, our promo videos. Oh, you 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 gonna see you gonna see you <laughs> might choke. You might see yourself choke slamming me through a cage. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't. We just we just go crazy. So I got I gotta get rid of that then, huh? <laughs> you gotta know. You gotta go see it. Chuck. No, you gotta go watch that stuff. You, you gotta go watch them. I'll have to figure out how to get back into it because I, I really, I, I never actually logged hey, Trav, into it. A, hey, Trav, DM, DM to him. They, they all, he always have. Them. Yeah, I sent him to him. I sent him to him <laughs> in a text message. I sent him all his promo videos. I sent him ones that we didn't do. use either. I did tell you I was tech challenged. Now you, you know that's a fact. I we mean, we got you here. Don't That's, worry about it. Don't worry about it. We, we, we're, it's, it's we're, good. We're baby steps. Baby steps. You sort sort of got me here. You you still can't <laughs> see me, can you? <laughs> no, we still can't see you. I Hold mean, you are very green. You a little damn, green. damn. I, well, that's I can pretty. See the gray, I can see the gray hair at the top now. That's pretty typical. I avoided. <laughs> what? No, you can't. <laughs> I, can't see it I don't know, Keto. You can see that nah, man's hair through nah, that. I'm about, nah, it's must... like the top of the screen is gray. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you see, like one of the people. Oh yeah, you yeah. Watch like the blurred word out. The blur. The oh blurred yeah. Parts of, like the Spice Channel. Be like, that's. No, I used to do that when I was a kid. Real <laughs> tough. Yeah. I see the lines of gray hair now above the green. Now I see what you're looking at. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like back in the day, when I was like, when I was like mad, and, uh, I wake up and Showtime was on. <laughs> and like, yeah, all that's another story. That's another story. Chuck. Yeah, that'd be another one we got to come back to. <laughs> all right, Chuck. So, you know, you've given us part of like the the history of Chuck Vogel before you got into Condros. Uh, now, could you tell us your foray into? getting green tree pythons because a lot of the stuff that you said earlier we're gonna have to go back to it I, I yeah imagine. yeah we will but see yeah so i i was around eugene while he got into chondros and i, I watched all of his chondro thing build up and then you know i watched i watched rico get into them and build his thing up and i always appreciated them and thought they were cool but i just never kept them and the, the way that I got into chondros was when those first waves of Kofi Al started coming in, uh, like when the, the NRBE was in Orlando, uh, mm -hmm. early, early 2000s, uh, I saw those freaking glowing yellow Kofi Al and I thought, damn, they look like giant yellow eyelash vipers. I, I got to check those out. Mm -hmm. And um Man, I, I just knew I had to have them because it was something really weird and different. And uh, I just had to have them. So I bought several. I bought a couple. And um, and this is when Kofi Al was like plentiful. This one, they was coming in, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Them, right? yeah, they, they what, started. What were some of the prices like? like? 
I think Crutchfield Crutchfield paid an ungodly amount of money for like one of the first ones, some of the first ones to come in. He paid thousands of dollars for them. But later on, they were like uh, the going rate was like twelve hundred per sub adult, bright yellow ones. Uh, and then like John Lingo started showing up at the, at the expo and, uh, he had little guys that were pretty much established and he was selling for like 800 bucks a piece or something. And Rico and I bought quite a few of, of the Lingo ones because John Lingo had some really nice Kofi Al. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, there were some setbacks, uh, because, um, you know, once I start, I got a fairly good group going. I bought one from, um, uh, shit. One of those, one of those guys at the expo that has a million tables and tons of snakes and flip snakes, so not triple L, but one of those type people, not underground might've been underground. Yeah. Uh, but I bought a mail and for cheap and that freaking snake killed all my Kofi Al. <laughs> uh, Do you know what happened? I don't know exactly what happened at to that at that point. Uh so that was a little bit of a setback. And then so, what, then wait, like, hold on. so when you yeah. say that one killed your Kofi out, so that one did it come in sick or there were you breeding or like so tell, tell it, us a little bit about that. It was an import that had been, you know, hanging out at underground reptiles with 5 billion other snakes and animals, you know, so it was exposed to everything in the world. And, you know, I, I semi quarantined it the best I could. Uh, but I was so anxious to like try to breed these things after, you know, a month of it eating just fine and seemed to be just fine. I stuck it in with my nice yellow female. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks after that, I started noticing some weird stuff and they stopped eating, which was real unusual. And within a week, they were uh, they were both dead. The, those adults were both dead. And Damn. eventually, all those early ones died. And and then shortly after that, there was a guy on uh, in Texas on MVF that had like three point three, I believe. And he had he had bought them like a year in '85 or something, and in '86 they he had they didn't breed for him, and I think a couple were starting to like a couple had turned you know green wash, and he he was afraid they were all going to turn green, and he posted them for sale. I, I think they were for sale on MVF, like in 2005 or six. Uh, but at any rate, I bought all that I could afford, which was like 2.2, .2. uh, I bought four, two males, two females from him. And that ended up being my founder group. And mm. both, both of the males, uh, stayed yellow for life till they were like 15 years old. Well, till Nido virus killed them when they were about 15 years old. And, and the female, so those were the, so the canaries. The females were were outstanding animals. The one one of them turned hormonal blue after the second clutch. Uh, yellow rose. The guy in Texas had already named all these animals, and I just sort of I don't name my animals, but I kept the names that he had given them because it was like sunflower and daffodil and yellow rose and you know things I wouldn't have named them, but they were already named, so I I went with it. Uh, but, uh, yellow rose was just a spectacular female and she laid, uh, six or seven, she laid seven clutches in a row, seven years in a row. And wow. she was, she was still healthy as hell. She was, she would start eating like this, the week after she laid, she would start eating again. Uh, and usually would eat right up until her, her pre-lay shed. Uh, mm. she was great great snake and uh then nido came and uh you know um we were uh trying to rico had his seizure in orlando like in 2013 and i i hauled ass to orlando and and saw him the morning after surgery and uh 
that was a really bad time. And, uh, and then for the next 18 months or so, you know, I was going back and forth up there, back here, up there, back here, trying to help him do what I could. And, um, eventually the re reality set in that he was going to have to sell the collection. And that was you're, amazing. You're a good friend. You're a good friend. Yeah. For doing that, man. Uh, man, there's, there's nothing that I would not have done for Rico. He, he was as good a person as you could ever meet in the world. And th this is like a lot of the Condro world knows him as Lord, Lord Walter, you know, and all, all. Yeah. He, he was a very humble, uh, you know, um, easy going uh you know if, if you were stuck on the side of the road he'd pull over and try to help you he was just a good human being he was a good guy and uh i would have done anything to help him and uh so we we worked with a bunch of people to get a bunch of the collection sold That's and the piece, Rico. Uh, there yeah, we are the piece, Rico. when we when we finally lost him uh in october 2014 um, Darlene and I, uh, had to do something with the hundred or so snakes that were left. And so we waited a few months and then, uh, in, you know, spring, spring, summer, 2015, we had photographed everything and, and put groups together and, and yeah, I started doing the auction. I remember that. Yeah. I posted, posted, uh, Darlene sent me the groups and then I posted them on, on the, on Rico's, uh, Facebook page. And we kind of winged it to pull off these auctions and we got help from people like, uh, you know, Matt and, uh, James Gabriel was a guy who used to be around, uh, who, who seemed to know everything. He, he seemed to have studied all the damn, uh, pedigrees and, um, yeah, I know, uh, I know James Gabriel. I remember. There were, uh, there were, there were animals that Darlene and I couldn't quite figure out uh, a positive, uh, identification for, um, because what was on the, on the, um, on the tub or on the cage didn't match what was in the computer. And James was in a lot of cases, he was able to figure it out and say, Oh, that's such and such a snake that was on loan from so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. Um, he helped out a lot so much so that I ended up sending him a little Kofi owl from that 2016 clutch. Um, but anyway, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, along about about the time the auctions finished and, and when when rico clearly was not going to to make it he sent all of his kofi out down with me because he said you know you might as well you, you need to put these with yours and keep the kofi out going so i brought was, Mid was midas in that group no no i don't know what happened to midas um there was probably like um 10, 10 or 12, uh, you know, he had sold all the little guys. So it was like adults and sub adults, uh, you got 10, 12 Kofi. I just didn't around. <laughs> well, you know, uh, one of, one of them was the one eyed girl, which I sent you a picture of Travis. That was the coolest little female ever. It was from the, uh, it was a lingo line snake. Um, no, no, that's the no, blackhead. No, that's, that's the blackhead. Black like, it, it was a bright yellow Kofi owl, and it had one eye. There's one eye missing. That's one of mine outside. One of the 2016s or 22s. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, yeah, those one. are. Yeah, those are. That's number 10, 20, 2210. That's 2210, and that's one of the normal ones. Travis, could you see the difference uh, between the the twenty two ten and twenty two sixteen? The ones that were all like patterned. Yeah. So I had a question for you about about the Kofi owls, about the the single scale uh, OCC that looked like was going on. Uh, but I was yeah. going to say that to the end. Okay. So um, this is one of them that ha that has it. Um, so there, like boom. Up here at the yeah. top. Well, look at the on the sides. Look at the lateral. Yeah. It it goes from the, the dorsal all the way down to the bottom on the side. And, and I want like, to ask you about 
So that I've never seen that in my life in 20 years of messing with Kofi. I've never seen that in my life. And when I did the sibling pairing of 2016, and, and of course the blackhead canary is the grandsire on the maternal side. Uh, you know, I did this sibling pairing and these 22s at 13 months, they had like seven out of 10 had this like uh muted dark scales and what yeah. the hell man i've never seen that ever in my life and it, it would look real subtle to people who had not you know bred kofi out for 20 years but to right. me it was like this is something weird this is not normal and um the only explanation i could come up with was it has to be from the blackhead you know and doing a sibling pairing to, to get to get that trait right uh so i mean right now only time is gonna tell but i'd i'd be willing to you know bet a non-critical digit of maybe a little finger or something i'd be willing to bet that these, these are gonna <laughs> turn out. they may not look exactly like the original blackhead but i bet they're gonna be pretty damn similar uh because if you really look at that sort of uh uh faded muted pattern and you look at the uh blackhead uh picture of the blackhead you can see that it fought the pattern is the same the colors are different but the pattern is the same and, and yeah. also you know yeah. kofi al kofi al go until they're four or five years old before there's any change at all you know you, you they're that nice beautiful kofi al uh, unblemished yellow like number 10 until they're uh you know four or five years old and these things at 13 months had this weird speckly thing going on so and, and the fact that the the 22s are two years old now are are clearly different from from the normal ones it, it's, just, it's got to be something going on there and uh i I, I, the other weird thing is Kofi Al always change abruptly, like overnight. And this has been a, a, a slow, slow, slow burn thing. Where, this is what, over, over like, over what, like six, seven months, you starting to see these little speckles coming in? It's been a year now. It, it, it was at oh, like yeah, 12 or 13 months that I saw it, and they're like two years old now. So, so you can see it a little bit better here, and it's just like, so what? What is that? Like, what does it I, turn that, into? So what that is, Travis, is not normal. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah, I've that's never, what I was saying when I saw it. I was just like, what? What is it? Because you were thinking it would turn yellow, but it's already I, yellow. I mean, I think I I can't. I don't know how many clutches I I have had over the years. I should a lot of them, and Rico had a lot of them. And I've seen tons of pictures of them. And I've never, ever, ever seen this before. Subadult Kofi Al just don't look like that. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, I, I think there's a high probability that they're going to end up influenced heavily by the blackhead canary grandsire. Okay. And I've got 23s uh, yearlings now, and I can just start to see the same thing on these 23s um so and i've got i've got a clutch cooking in there that was just laid last week so there'll be some 24s coming along um last week. Okay. but it seems like all the the sibling pairings of those 2016s are gonna produce this weird thing whatever it is and it's just gonna yeah. take time, it's just gonna take time to see what develops but i can yeah. tell you that I can tell you that it, it just hit me so hard that it's so not normal that, that you know, I, I tried to think of every possible explanation. And the only thing I can come up with is, is it's just got to have something to do with that blackhead. Um, there's just no other good explanation that I can come up with. Something I've noticed just looking at them babies. And I noticed this. Pull previous, it back up. Kofi out too is. Yeah, you pull it back it, up. Any, yeah, anyone. Give me a good eye shot from the side. So what yeah, I noticed is, of, um, you see the the ladder, the that pattern right there. So you've been breeding for twenty years. Have you noticed that too? That um, 
on a high percentage of the Kofi house is unbroken? Uh, wait a minute. Say that again. Uh, that the that line right there that goes through the eye. If you if you see a nose, it starts at the nose and goes like to the base of the head right there. Yeah, I tell you uh, the what truth. What I've noticed you... on a lot of con a lot of uh, a lot of Kofi out that that line is somewhere along the face on one of the sides is unbroken. You know, I've never, I've never, I don't know. I've never paid attention to it. Okay. Because I, I, uh, I was talking to Boz, Daniel Boz. Yeah. And a lot of his Kofi out have that. And I was looking so, at, uh, I was looking at Rico's, Rico's page back when I, um, you could, you could access it through web archive and the, and a, a few of his have that unbroken, and it's it, it don't matter which side. It just seemed like it's to me. It seemed like it's a common trait, but but maybe it, it I'm, might, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it might be on Boswell. Uh, Boswell's, uh, you know, I've noticed that they're perfectly normal, like that that nice bright. Uh, see that right? Look, you see this picture right here? That's and number the, the, the ten. Eye, like right behind the eye, you see how it's like a missing space right there. Oh like yeah, connection. yeah. I I see what you're talking about. In the yeah. Previous picture. Go. Can you go back to the previous picture, Travis? I see exactly uh, what you're talking about. Not this one. It was one right before this one. No, uh, it this was one? after this one. Before. Yeah. So, on the right eye, you see right behind there is like a little bit unbroken. It's like a miss. It's like a middle missing yeah, piece right yeah. there. I wish I had a mouse person. I know what you're talking about, Kino, and it, that's that's highly that all those uh, facial markings and head markings are super duper variable. Uh, okay. The thing that the thing that never changes is, you know, once they hit sub adults, that it's that it's that glowing yellow that that everybody loves Kofi Al for with the lavender. Yeah, yeah just like, that's number ten, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, number 10 is a, a typical, that's what Kofi Hour is supposed to look like. And, um, you that's know, the, the 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 ones that are not like, I mean, Daniels, Boswell seem to look like that. All Rico's look like that. All John Lingo's look like that. All the ones I've ever seen look like that as sub-adults. Yeah. And, and then when they do change at like three or four or five or six or seven years old, it's like overnight with exactly. one day, Praise me. one day it's yellow and two days later it's it's green or it's got a big green stripe or something. Uh, it happens real fast uh, if it happens at all. Uh, but comes I, at you fast. And this and this just a standard yeah. coffee. Yeah, that's how all of them look. Yeah, that's how all of them should look. And, and these things that have that muted pattern. At 13 months, that's the most bizarre thing. First, to even have a pattern, and then to have it that early is is just double weird. It's not supposed to be that way. So, so there, there's have something you seen, going on. What are the traits that you've seen, and the earliest have you seen them um, of canary Kofi Owls? Uh, well, the little guys look like pretty, to me, they look like any other yellow uh, Neos, you know? they. Right. They just look like a yellow neo until they get past about a year, and then they start having that nice, clean, glowing yellow. With and the dorsals turn lavender, they get that Kofi Al look, and um, that doesn't change. Like all the 2016s were that beautiful yellow with lavender dorsals until most of them went to five. One of them went to seven, and one of them hasn't changed at all. It, it's still yellow. Um, What's but, the average amount of time for uh, Kofi Owls to change exactly? Because they are yellows, and yellows usually change early. But it seems like these Kofi Owls take they take the the length of time that reds do. They take a hell of a long time. Like I said, yeah. all the twenty all the twenty sixteen clutch most all but one went to five years before they changed. They were bright yellow with with lavender and then white dorsals until they were five years old. And you still um, got an eight-year-old, you said, from that clutch that's still yellow? Yeah, I got a male. My breeder, uh, good one of my breeder males is still yellow. He's not going to change. He's just like the two founder yellow male. Did you, you did you change his enclosure yet? Did I do what? Did you move his enclosures? No. Why? What do you mean? Because <laughs> you know they say that's they, 
that's one of the rumors too. Like as soon as you as soon as you uh change their clothes or you like move them from their uh juvenile to or you move them from like they a two two to a three two, whatever it is. It seemed like oh, yeah, they yeah, say too, yeah. That, that changes too. Yeah. He's been in, uh, he, he goes from like, uh, I bought a whole bunch of, uh, Eugene's old, uh, Neodesha cubes, um, oh. like many, many, many years ago after he got rid of all the chondros, I bought a whole bunch of those Neodesha cubes. So my adults go from, they go in a Neodesha cube or a vision, uh, you know, two by three, three by two, um, that's mostly what I what I've always used. Now I've got Rico's uh, uh, habitat systems, which eventually I'll move some into. But um, I really like the you know I've gotten used to the Neodeshas and the and the visions. I'm one of those guys that's never used a heat panel in my life. I've got dome you lights. Still got, you still got the cave, ball. Man. I got dome lights on top, and you know, I it's it's primitive, but you know what, it works. That was one of my questions still, for you, Chuck. We, we still got uh, some Barwin members that um, a couple of our members use that. So hey, yeah, man. there's three of them. There's three of them. There's still two. <laughs> there, I was gonna say, say the there can't there, there can't be many. Cat, I hate, there can't be <laughs> there can't be many. But you know what? If if you, they still, it still if, works. If you get it where you got you got it dialed in and it works, you know why change it? I don't know. Yep. I'm just comfortable. Hey, I, gotta, I gotta ask you this question, Chuck. So you know, um, Pat, what as up, you've Pat? been keeping keeping. Over the years, can you tell us like how your early setups look, um, and like what you have changed over the years? But also let us know like how those eyelash vipers help influence how you kept the chondros and all those vipers that you had before, and if you so, use any of that stuff. All the 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 eyelash vipers, the temple vipers, the lateralis. Uh, what up, Pat? Uh, all those uh, arboreal pit vipers were. I mean, you know, they're they're real similar to chondros. You got it's a pain in the ass to get the little guys going, and um, uh, you know they need basically the same setup and basically the same husbandry. So you know it's pretty similar. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it, it definitely helped a lot to have done those guys before doing the chondros. Okay. Uh, but I, my little guys start out in little shoebox tubs, and then they go to the sweater box rack, and then they go to a big, like, 60-quart uh, tub. Then they go to an 80-quart tub. They're in a tub, a, a Sterilite tub, until they go into a, a Neodesha cube or a Vision or some, you know, adult thing. Okay. I keep them in tubs for a long time. I think it's smart. I do think that that's really smart. Um, well, only because because as you move them around, you know, move them up in size, you know, at different times of their lives, like they might revert. Yeah. So you might have to put them back in a smaller tub. Well, also one of my one of my theories that probably could be nothing at all except in my head. Uh, it seems like um, the the sub adult Kofi Al the two three well the three four year olds when when they move if you like sell one and and ship it somewhere and it gets set up in an adult cage uh it seems like they're really prone to change when that happens like if you keep their if you keep their their surroundings their environment the same they're more likely not to change does that make sense yeah it's sort I mean, of that's what, what Keno was talking about earlier yeah, that's why, I, like, with all those 2016s. Like a, like, like a chameleon snake. Yeah, <laughs> man. Chameleon well, snake. That, there, there's definitely a chameleon factor with these guys, but that's a whole different story. But uh, I, I figured, you know what, I'm going to keep their environment exactly the same for four years or five years till I'm ready to set them up to start breeding. And with the 2016s, it it seemed to work. All of them stayed. There was one of them that turned my only true changeling turned at like three and a half, just short of four years, three and a half or four years. And all the rest of them of the 10 snakes 
uh, were, were beautiful yellow until five years old or right at about five years old. And one oh, of them, my, my, my main female that's laid three years in a row now, she was yellow uh, for until she was seven, until after her, her second clutch. Um, in fact, I think I sent you like a little video clip, Travis, and I sent a picture of her laying on a clutch. She's like cur think, curled up on a clutch. Video, I don't think the video clip came through in the okay. email. Okay. It might not have, but there's like a still picture of her laying on a clutch and she's mm. yellow as hell. She was, she was yellow as hell, um, through the first clutch and the second clutch. And like a month or two after the second clutch, she started to get oh, dirty so yellow. She got dirty yellow after like a couple months yeah, after. You got to talk to her. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hey man, seven seven years of yellow. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And, and now she's turned into this two tone thing. If you if you look at the pictures that I took like uh, last week after she laid, um, I've got a picture of her uh, on the eggs in the nest box, and um, she's a two tone snake, man. There's like uh, this yellowy, flowery ish stuff on the top, and then it's like. Halfway down, it's like a, a monotone greenish yellow thing going on. Uh, it's very weird. I, it's something I haven't really seen before. Um, and, but, you know, they do the chameleon thing you mentioned. The males especially are big time chameleons. Uh, breeding season and non-breeding season, they change a lot between seasons. Like my yellow. Ask you, have you had have you had any uh, that from go from yellow to green and then go back to yellow? Because I we I had a well not me but I saw it was this guy recently uh, not a few years ago he had a it was like a Lara or something like that and it went green it went it was red and then it went green and then the thing went yellow as an adult. Um, I so. I've had them go yellow and I mean green and then back to yellow, but not totally back to solid yellow. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. I mean like my male, my yellow male. Pastel, that's like be, a pastel green look. Yeah. Like my, my yellow uh, guy that's like eight years old now uh, and yellow as hell. Uh, I've got pictures of him at like five years old and he looked like he was going to turn green. You know, uh, so we got some more at. pictures. We got some more pictures that I didn't see. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, the way you explain these things changing way after they should, they sound like really shitty dads who change with <laughs> their new family. <laughs> <laughs> and they do all the things with their new family they should have done with their first one. They sound like J. Cole's dad. Yo, <laughs> Kobe hey sound like now. J. Cole's dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey now, hey now. <laughs> no, the, the, the with the with the uh, yellow for life males, and it's usually, almost always males that are the ones that are yellow for life. Um, like my my yellow guy who's just been yellow as hell for for a couple of years now. Uh, whenever uh, it's like this time of year, females are laying. He j he's freckled up. He's got like green freckles and little blotches all over him. There's there's the founder hormonal blue yellow rose that laid six seven clutches in a row. Uh, who was, was just crazy. a crazy that snake? Even, that don't even here's look the, like a here's the Neil Desha cages. Do I? Oh yeah, there there's Eugene's old cages. <laughs> SA seventy <Yeah>. seven <laughs> was probably a famous. That was probably a famous Eugene Bissett snake that lived in there. And yeah, there's the yellow male. Um, but <laughs> right now, when the females are laying, he's all freckled up with green things. And, and as soon as we get like into summer, it'll go away. He'll be back to like solid yellow. Really? So they definitely freckle up and then they clean up, you know, from season to season. And there's one of the uh, one of the abnormal 22 two year olds, which you can see pattern on big time. 
there. And, here's, uh, a better, my, here's a better one. You can see it on. Yeah. yeah. See black stairs. <laughs> when I when I look at the sides of the blackhead and kind of it's easier on the earlier picture of the blackhead from Indonesia. But when you look at the pattern on that guy, and then I look at the the uh, muted pattern on these guys, there's similarities. You can see on the side where there's like, you know, it's kind of like a, a little maze where you could follow the yellow stripe down the side. And yeah. you can kind of see where the yellow's going to be and where the green's going to be and where the blue's going to be. I, I just have a feeling, and I could be dead wrong. But you can see it. You can see it. when you follow uh, the blackhead canaries. Um, when they, when they got the picture, of both right there. I, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, it, especially if I or could if I could come over and hang out in the room with you guys and show them to you. That's a one of my favorite changelings from my old uh, founder group. That was Snowflake. Um, he was how, a often, how often are you seeing white like that on your coat, yeah? Man, Copia usually get like big out, just big white scales, but this guy had patches of white scales. Mm. He had another, there's a third patch somewhere that you can't see in this picture, but I love that it. snake. He was an amazing snake. And he'd go from like uh, green yellow to yellow, greenish yellow to yellowish green with the change of seasons. He was a great snake. There's Yellow Rose, who. By the way, her head always, that's uh, one of her offspring. Uh, that's, one that, that's one that turned like blue and then started getting really white. That's one that, that just when it was starting to get interesting. Oh, you can see the white right there too on the belly. Yeah. Yeah. It started creeping up from the belly. And um, that's just a, a sub adult from back in the 2011 or 10 or something. Just yeah, to I think show this is the one. same one. Damn. There, there's one of my founder. That's one of the founder males, Daffodil. He was an awesome snake. He was a rapist. Boy, you put any female in there, and he what? Would, he would, <laughs> and Pat, you talking about me getting canceled, Pat? <laughs> his his nickname was the rapist. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> Pat. Listen, uh, Pat. You're not gonna say anything about me today, bro. <laughs> and you could. You could dangle a rope in there. He, he would be locked up. With it. He, was, he was an awesome snake. <laughs> He's a beautiful snake. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's interesting how the, uh, the, 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 the dorsal didn't go lavender on here and it went white instead. Well, whenever they hit like four, about four years old, it goes from lavender to white. You know, those lavender blotches, they go from lavender to white at about like four, three or four years old. It's like from two to three, they're nice and lavender or, you know, one, two and close to three, they're lavender. And then at about three to four, they turn white. And and with the males, a, a good many of them, like, you know, I would say maybe 20 percent of the males are going to stay yellow. And it pisses me off so much when, you know, somebody, when, uh, I don't know if it was Daniel Boswell that, that I made a comment on and, and some guy made a comment that, uh, going to turn green. They're going to turn green. And, I you thought know, right, Pat. It was yeah, Patrick Holmes. no, it wasn't. I don't think it was Patrick, but I tried I'm just not messing with you, Pat. I'm just joking, bro. <laughs> I tried not to be I tried not to be negative in my comment, but I did let them know that it, it was really frustrating to see comments like that because I know they're just repeating what somebody told them. Uh, but, you know, when you actually have spent 20 years messing with them uh, and you know better, it really irritates me when people say, oh, yeah, they all they, Kofi, I'll turn green. No, they freaking don't. Don't don't tell me they turn green. <laughs> you see a check about the Chuck Vogel. Not sass about his Kofi Yeah, I got if you see uh my fault, if you see DFW, if you see that DFW comment on uh that's Patrick. That's Pat. That Say that again. Here's your babies. If you see uh if you see us pull up a comment, DWF our burials, that's Patrick. DFW. Uh, 
Okay, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told yeah, us to yeah. tell you how because you, you probably you probably don't know his screen name. I, no, I do. I I, I shoot him. Uh, uh, we communicate every now and then on uh, uh, Messenger. Okay. That, that was uh. There's your Kobe out there. Yeah, there's um. I don't know which. I think those are twenty twos or twenty threes. I don't remember. If those are this 22. is a different. I think this is a different clutch from the first one. Oh, possibly. So, this Look at you still are, got them. Uh, you still got my old school Asado rides. This is my girl. <laughs> uh, this is my girl. Uh, oh three, uh, sixteen oh three, who's still in her nest box right this minute as we speak, and she's gonna lay a lot of something. She she might be a twenty egg clutch. That looks like a big girl. Yeah, she's a big girl, here's, and and the her literal here's the other girl. Her littler sibling will just lay. Yeah, she just laid fifteen. Unfortunately, I, I thought the fifteen were all going to be good to go, but uh, it looks like four or five of them are were not fertile. They've gone in the past like four or five days. They've slowly a couple of them went bad. So I, I'll be happy if you know ten or twelve of them go the distance, but. Look at the two tone thing going on with her. I was gonna say, is she from the Blackhead uh, Project too? She is. Uh, she yeah, she is. Uh, um, she what got, it, she's she, a, she got, a, she's a, a, she got the, she, the, the the yellow line around her lateral that the Blackhead did. Yeah, she's a twenty sixteen. Uh, she's not one of the ones that was weird. She was nice, normal yellow until like five years old. And then she slowly changed. Um, but uh, she's like uh, the 2016s were the first clutch. Um, and then I, I bred them together, did the sibling pairings with these guys, with this snake and the last girl you saw in the box and uh, the yellow for life male uh, and another male from the 2016 clutch. Uh, there's, there's like, uh, yeah. What, which, well, I can't see it. It's too small. What does it say there? Uh, this is the, uh, number three number female, three female and number seven, number seven, seven male. 11, yeah, 19, yeah. 22. Yeah. So there's the, uh, the yellow for life male who's looking kind of green, but he's not. And then, the uh, uh, number three female. Yeah. And and that's the same female that was yellow through her second. So there's uh, what is that's not this? the same pair. That's not the same pair. No, because this what one's from 2021. Uh, yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's a different pair. That's a previous that's pair. That's a whole that's bunch number, of that's, 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 that's number that's seven and three. That's number seven and three yeah. doing the hot tub thing there. Oh yeah, um, getting the water. That's the one that led to the 22 clutch. Um, it's hard as hell for me to tell with the damn phone because it's like postage stamp small and I can't see. That says uh, uh, this number seven and number three male. It says yeah. Population. This was 11, 19, 21. Yep. So the, that's a sibling. Those guys are siblings from the 2016 clutch. And um, they they are the ones the that have the uh uh the snake that Matt rescued from the auctions that Darlene and I both failed to realize was a pure Kofiel. Thank God Matt realized it and he bought it and sent it here. Uh if he hadn't done that, I might not have Kofiel right now because uh, all of mine and all of Rico's that came down here. And all my holdbacks, every one of them died uh, in 2015 into 16. The only ones that survived were the eggs in the incubator, that 2016 clutch, and they were in the incubator while all the fuck, all my snakes were dying. And Damn. just like Matt, just like Matt, I lost like 95% uh, of of my snakes. The Shout out to Matt one. Morris, great guy. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Absolutely. He yeah. if it wasn't for him, I, I, I might not have any copia right now. Because yeah, he Matt saved 
he saved that signal herp 09107 and she's the one whose sire is the blackhead canary so if it wasn't for matt if it, if it wasn't for matt none of this would be happening so i i'm my i'm, I'm forever in matt's debt <laughs> yeah but you that's know wild, i man. think that's i i think that you come from that era where people were really just they were really rooting for each other like like I think that in your area it was less about selling snakes. It was more about hey, we really Absolutely. do have a real community. And Absolutely. I think, that, I think that that's what it was all about, and you guys actually do show it. I think that it, in our day and age, a lot of it's about attention. A lot of yeah. it's about you know saying you can sell a snake for however much. But yeah. and, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are really good people still. Like we do have a really good community, but yeah. Uh, I, I think that money and attention do complicate some things sometimes. Well, and, and social That's media, true. because, you know, you didn't used to yeah. have everybody, uh, you know, you didn't used to have everybody seeing what you're doing and what you got. Uh, social media changed it a lot. But, um, uh, yeah. yeah, it used to be. I hate selling snakes, Travis. I, I, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> selling snakes. Hey, man, me too. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. And, and Rico Rico used to constantly give me crap because, uh, you know, the first time I went to uh, Daytona in like 2010 with a bunch of Kofi to sell, you know, I thought, man, I can't price these things at 2000 bucks. I'm not signal her. Nobody's going to pay 2000 bucks for these. So I priced them at like 1200 for females and 900 for males. And when they opened the damn doors at, at 10 o'clock on Saturday by like 12 o'clock, every damn one of them were sold. People came in and bought every damn one. And you, told Rico, Rico, you told Rico, Rico how much you sold it for. He oh, wanted no, to no, no. <laughs> Rico, <laughs> Rico had already walked over there before the show started. And he said, he said, Chuck, what in the hell are you doing? He said, what, what are you doing, man? You, you can't do this. You know, they're two thousand dollars. What what are you doing? And I told him, I said, Man, I'm not you, Rico. I, people aren't gonna pay this. And hey, he's man. gonna yes, they will. So he, he gives kinda... me shit. He gives me yeah. shit about being the world's worst businessman. Uh, you know, it's like if ever you're gonna go in business with somebody, don't go in business with Vogel because you'll lose. You know, I'm I'm one of the buy high, sell low type people. Hey man, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't. I, it's like, still like, like, other people the, out there like out, out here like that too. Chuck, by the way, go ahead. Yeah, with, 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 with the snake business, when it comes down to it, man, it's just kind of just like you know. I'd rather sell a snake to somebody I really, really like more so than sell it to a random person. Me for too. More money and, yeah. and a lot of people. A lot of people. I got to be honest with you. I don't like them. Don't want to talk to them. I don't answer their messages. Uh, but when it comes to people that <laughs> really do Damn, like, child, you just you well, I'm, just, I'm you glad you're being you honest. Like, I'm glad I, you're being I, honest. I, I, listen, <laughs> when it comes to people I really, really mess with, like they can come to me and they can ask me for generally just about anything. This the only time. This, this is why you only talk to me during Conjo Bar Room now. What are you talking about? I talk to you. <laughs> listen, I talk to you all the time. Listen, I talk to Kino all the time. Listen, I, I know. Listen, it, if you follow me on Instagram and you see when I put those memes up of what it Kino sounds like at 7 a.m. with his random I know, I know shit, you're not talking to me about following you on Instagram. Yeah, that's yeah, not you, because we know you don't Yeah, follow, you you know but, I don't. But, every, <laughs> but everybody else is like, those are really the conversations I had with Kino at 6 52 a.m. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember you remember Taquarius? That was a 6 52 a.m. conversation. And Pat, I see what you're saying, man. I think that I think that as far as like what we've done with CBR, like we got a good crop of people that we deal with. Um, there's people that you know that may not necessarily be the best people to deal with, but I think that within CBR, we oh, got a good group Pat, of people oh, that Pat, we deal with. Oh, Pat definitely one of them ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and Pat, Pat, you know, Pat I do, definitely one I talk of them to ones. You all the time, Pat. That's what. That's why we stay giving Pat his flowers on that show. You know what I'm saying? We love Pat. Yeah, I've always wanted to just have enough, you know, ha have enough financial security, which I'll never have because teachers yeah. don't get paid much. Uh, you know, I wish I was wealthy enough that I didn't need the money. And then I would just like 
give snakes and trade snakes with people who I thought would do well with them. But uh, especially with the last uh, couple of years of, you know, getting my ass kicked by COVID and, and one thing after another, uh, you know, I've kind of desperately needed a little bit of money, but I'm real uncomfortable selling snakes for a bunch of money. How's your body doing? I, uh, I, I really doing hate it. That? How's your body doing after that COVID, by the way? Everything good? Your lungs all right? You yeah. know, I'm I'm never gonna be the same. I mean, I've got I got lesions in my lungs that are not gonna go away, and I've got I get out of breath really easily, and uh, yeah. I'm so so freaking tired that uh, you know if I do anything uh, that takes any effort at all, man, I'm like in the bed the next day all day, and I, I just don't think I'm ever gonna be the same after it. Uh, I, I had it. I was positive from like Thanksgiving until Christmas. And, Whoa. and oh yeah, I, I had a fever for like 21 days straight, and, and I was I was like coughing up bloody mucus for like I think uh, I've got all this written down. I think that lasted about 13 days. Um, I should have gone to the hospital, but at okay. that time, people were dying at the hospital, and I didn't want to be around yeah, people. No, you, you didn't want to yeah. go out. I think that you did it right. You thugged it out, but you made sure you was okay. Yeah, well, the pulmonologist said you, they said I should have gone to the hospital. <laughs> but, uh, you know, at the time, I felt like it was more of a danger to go to the hospital than to just rough it out at home. And somehow you know, I just somehow I thought I would just be able to plow through it, uh, but it it did damage to my body, and it's not going to go away. I can I, I've decided after four years it's not going to go away. But uh, but I'm, you know, I'm did, my, um, Chuck uh, Chuck, because I got asthma. That's the reason why I asked about the lungs. So I know, I know how it is. Sometimes it feel like yeah. like like somebody's sitting on your chest. Uh, I feel for you because that's my thing. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, I feel I'm aware of breathing, you know, and you're not supposed to be aware of your breathing. Yeah. And I'm so look, always Chuck, every now and then what I want you to do is go um in the bathroom, close the door and turn the shower on all the way hot and pull it and pull the curtain back and just sit on the toilet and breathe in. That's one of the few things I can do to not uh, to not feel like I have like somebody sitting on my chest. Yeah, yeah, and taking a hot shower is one of the few things. And if you I don't want to, do. and if you don't want to get all sweaty, just put like a rag. Like I try to boil a rag sometimes as hot as I can get it, and I'll just put it right up to my mouth right here and just breathe that in, breathe that humidity. Yeah, that'll help you too. It'll open your lungs up a little bit. I've got like uh, multiple different kinds of inhalers and uh, the yeah. pulmonology guys did all sorts of stuff. But, um, uh, you know, I've had to do that pulmonary function test about a dozen times, it seems like. And yeah. I hate that. And and I'm at about like uh, 75 percent gas exchange and lung capacity. Which is yeah. not too good, you know. I can get I can get dizzy really easily, <laughs> but uh, hell, there's a lot of people that are dead, and a lot of people that are worse off than I am. So I, I try not to complain too much about it. Yeah, you, you, still, you, have you, like still a, you think you have like a mucus issue, like where you might need to clear mucus out from time to time? Because I, I take mullion, the herb I mullion, to like to clear a lot of the the mucus out of my. I take mind. herbs too. I yeah. really don't. I really don't have mucus. I, I, what I have, what I have is, is uh, you know, I thought it was the lesions in my lungs that 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 made it hurt all the time. Because basically, my chest hurts all the time, breathing hurts all the time, and and the pulmonologist said, okay. "Well, you don't have any no, pain don't. receptors in your lungs." He said, "It's it's in the the muscle between your ribs and the stuff that's surrounding your lungs." Uh, but something there that feels like my lungs hurts all the time. It's just an uncomfortable feeling when I breathe all the time, except when I'm in the hot shower, you know, when I steam up the bathroom. Yeah. And that's about the only, the inhalers don't seem to do much. Uh, it's just kind of doing the steam bath thing. Uh, since COVID, especially since COVID. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and I was in, you know, I was in a classroom with 20 kids. 
And, uh, you know, uh, before I got that, uh, before I got, you know, my ass kicked, I had like 10, half my kids were in the classroom and half of them were on zoom. Uh, they were at home, you know, on zoom and Google classroom. But even then having 10 or 12 kids in front of me in the classroom, you know, kids are carrying germs and they got the germs from their parents and their siblings and their aunts yeah. and uncles. And and those Florida kids, so you know they was wilding. Well, I, I, I was exposed to a hell of a. I was a high you risk. Got the gator It's like gator goo. It's like, like, like tiptoeing to a minefield every day. Hey, what, yes. hey, Chuck, what, uh, what, Young uh, what gator goo shooters. <laughs> <laughs> what grade do you? I always teach, like though? living life on the edge, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> what grade? Do you, you know teach? what. So, do what? What, uh, what grade? What group do you teach? What what, what age group? What grade? So uh, I I did a, a hands on science lab for about four or five years, and then I did second grade for about like seven years at another school, and then at the little uh uh um uh what do you call it school um uh the one room schoolhouse. It's a uh, what do you call the schools that are not part of the public schools? Uh, private, the private the charter schools, charter school. Thank you. Charter school. This is another part of my COVID thing is I can't recall words. Uh, the charter school that I've been at for the last eight years, um, I did second grade for like three or four years. And then I did, uh, like, um, title one math where I would go pull like three or four kids or four or five kids or six kids and, and like work with a small group of kids. And I, I did like kindergarten through fifth grade, you know, throughout the day, I'd have like a group of little guys. Yeah. yeah when the test of seventh, seventh grade, is hard. Yeah, that's I, when I, kids I, learn how to start being bad. In seventh grade. There's, <laughs> there's not, there's not any amount of money in the world that I would, and that I would deal with those seventh graders, six, seventh graders. <laughs> He said in fifth graders, they still got a little bit of innocence. <laughs> the fifth graders, yeah, yeah, they still got a little bit of fear. You can put a little fear in them, but the seventh grader come around like, yeah, Mr. Vogel, I'll be smoking cigarettes with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll be smoking cigarette weeds with my friends. Oh, friend. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh yeah, God. Some, 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 some stories I could tell you. <laughs> I was, oh, I, I was before, we, grade. before we get up out of here, um, I want to touch on one thing because you come from that era of of feeding heavy. Uh, that was one of my questions. You got yeah. me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hold on, Chuck. Yes. 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 Well, it's been like two years and I finally stole one of yours. Yes. God damn it. I'm going to drink to that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's alive. <laughs> but no, I'm but still no, alive. Um, so how how you feed? How did you feed back in the day? Um, how has that changed, or has it stayed the same? How you feed babies? Talk to me. Um, when you when you move your animals up from the shoe box to sweater boxes, how do you move them up in a uh, price size too? <laughs> no. No! What happened? Chuck disappeared. That Listen, bro. Question. Bro, we still we still having a good time, bro. I still got questions on deck. That yeah, I, I, bro, I still like got I, some too. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I want to so see if, you, if he'll stay we, with us. Is we going to bring <laughs> Chris, man? That was a good ass question, man. I set up and what? everything, and he was like, boop. <laughs> he, did a J he did a J. Cole daddy on you. <laughs> he hit him with that deuce. Like, <laughs> wow. Get up out of there. He said, wow. <laughs> that guy, that damn, bro, why are, we taking this, why are we taking this brief break, bro? Put the sex light on, man. Oh, I didn't he put did the sex the light on. show with no sex light. Do you want, do you want to do the GUI belly roll? Do the GUI bro, belly what the? I don't ever do that shit again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing that back. I'm cutting that up, Zach. Let me write this down. 154. 
I need that time step. I'm bringing that shit back. I'm about to make a whole roll of you, bro. I'm about to, yeah. I'm bringing that back. This nigga just did the belly roll. He did the Shakira. Y'all saw him. Y'all saw this man rolling his belly like Shakira, like black Shakira. Crazy. 154. I got that written down. This nigga rolled his belly. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> I'm gonna be feeling frisky when that liquor gets to me. <laughs> this man just rolled his belly. Oh shit! Thank God Chuck had to see that man. Uh, bro, I don't think we're getting Chuck back. The phone died. His phone died. The phone died. <laughs> well, you I know think what? This I think we have to definitely do a part two. We're going to have to do a part two with Chuck. We're going to end this there because, see, that episode right here, this episode right here was way the fuck better than we then. I always thought, we already thought it was going to be not, we, yeah. like legendary and cool and all that, but <laughs> for Chuck to do that with no face, we need to get yeah. him back and see his face because that. <laughs> and he got some stories to tell, man. Yeah, we need I got to get deeper. Yeah, he has he has two stories that we talked about in just email that I got to talk to him about uh, that I want to get to on the show, but uh, it doesn't look yeah, like it's gonna happen. We gonna it's but, cool. We go it's cool. I like I like this because see this show leave us it leaves some meat on the bone. You know yeah, saying? some suspense, bro. Like this wasn't yeah. really supposed to happen, and. And he, you know what I'm saying? How that pre how that pre show went, bro? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, bang up the bangers, yeah, man. Um, this was we appreciate y'all coming, man. This was this is one of the episodes that was uh highly anticipated, man. Multiple people been asking for this, and you know we don't put out our list of, of guests coming on, but um. A couple of y'all, it was only like two people knew about this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, this was one of them ones, man. This exceeded I, even our expect, expectations. It was lofty. But, you know, talking about Puerto Ricans in Florida. Uh, <laughs> he's talking, <laughs> you know, he's talking terror squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he took. He took Rico <laughs> lady from <laughs> No. Yo, this man took Rico's girl, bro. <laughs> he, he, he took Rico. He took Rico's girl and took her back to Rico's crib. He gonna, he gonna, he gonna try to be nice about it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, that was still my friend. <laughs> 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 On. On the smooth ski. Hey, on yeah, the fucking hey, he, smooth just let y'all know he was a young man too back then. So you know he wasn't saying like at this age he was he was on that. No. Contact. Contact. <laughs> yeah. Chuck as well. You know? Chuck got Chuck got some stories to tell, but man, look for that part two. The part two is gonna be coming. And yeah. uh, we're gonna make sure that part two comes soon and y'all think. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move some around. Yeah, that's gonna this is gonna happen. Like we're gonna definitely do a part two. Uh, we, I, I feel like I feel like technology cheated us, but I think we still overcame uh, because technology definitely cheated us tonight, bro. <laughs> definitely cheated us tonight. <laughs> but we definitely got it. We definitely go. Because this was probably five. gonna be episode that was probably gonna go about two forty five. <laughs> <laughs> probably one three o'clock episode, like the uh, the Texas legend. Yeah. Except this yeah. was one man. This is a one man bandstand. This was, this was nice. This was nice. And we appreciate everybody for coming through. Hold on yeah, a second. Man. We, we appreciate everybody. Hold on. Oh, snap. Is Chuck Vogel back in the house in oh, the snap. Hughesy Bay? Chuck, did you pull back a beer? <laughs> is he back in the Hughesy? Chuck, you back. Baby? You got that nice green paint on your face again. All right, now I see the gray hair again. <laughs> How do you see anything? <laughs> it's, ah. a, it's, a, it's gray at the top of your screen. That's the gray hair, bro. 
You see the black marks up in there? That's like that's that's the mark of the black hair canary project. <laughs> <laughs> black lines. That's the, that's like the, blurred the, lines with black lines. Yeah, that's his, that's Chuck's signature. Don't sound so something, baby. Hey, Chuck, Chuck, if you want to get it in, come on, we can, we can keep going. Yeah. We definitely yeah. got more questions, so definitely got more questions. We got yeah, you, we got, you game, we, we got, got more brown. There's still more brown. And I can definitely go get more brown over there. Listen, we can keep this going. I'm keep sweating going strong. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, what's up? I'm feeling groovy, Chuck. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yeah, he's back. We can you... we man, back man the whole time and the damn thing went dead. Oh man, you back. probably gonna go do it again. What percentage I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying hard, man. Do what? What percentage you know, what'd you is, say? Your, is your battery on? Are you are you plugged up to the charger? Uh I was at I was at three when I got back on. Three percent when I got back on. Are you plugged up to the charger? It's charging, but apparently it's going down faster than it's charging. I also have okay. a, a very old piece of crap phone. <laughs> I'm going to buy a laptop between now and whenever you want me back. You're going to have to get a, you have to get one fast. <laughs> I will get. It. I think we want to. We want to move some things around. I'm not serious. We move some <laughs> no, we, we're serious. Get you back There's some fast. things. There's some things Man. that get moved around to get you back here, Chuck. Yeah, I, I, I was really looking. I was looking forward to talking about a lot of stuff, but damn it, uh, I, I will buy a laptop this week. Okay. And so a laptop this. Let's, work. let's do this, Chuck. Let's check back in with you. Um. And about let's say uh let's give it like three weeks. Okay. And cause we, let's let's stop this right here. Let's leave some meat on the bone because me and Trav, um, we got a, a gang of more questions to ask you. And honestly, we could probably do a whole another two hours. Yeah, easily. There's another two hours. We got there's, a million, there's a with million you. things that I wanted to tell you guys about. Yeah, with you, Chuck. Yeah, we, <laughs> we need to do another two hours. So let's let's end this right here. Let's get you. We, okay. We want, we want we want the full Chuck experience, and we going so we put, me down, put me down. Put me down for the. Uh, oh, oh God! I'll send you pictures of her. Uh, <laughs> do the first Thursday of the month. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you so do the first. So we can't do it. We can't do it the first Tuesday uh, of this month. Or Tuesday, up, but um, but we can't do it the first Tuesday. But we could do it like the second one. Or we can that'll work. Exception. That'll work. Or we'll, we'll we'll figure it out tomorrow. Between yeah, the three so, of us, we'll yeah, figure we'll, it out we'll figure out something offline. Let's talk about it offline. Uh, check. We'll get something done. Either, either one of you guys shoot me a text, and uh, I will have a laptop set up and ready, and we'll test it out like the day before. Okay. <laughs> but I'll buy, seriously i'll get I, I will buy a laptop i need one anyway and and we'll get this thing going properly okay chuck yeah no worries right. about the dates we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll work around you we got you yeah we got I, you I we'll, 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 we'll shoulder the load we just need stuff to show up stuff happens and uh yeah i appreciate you guys more than more than i can say no, we appreciate no, we, you. We appreciate it. Up, we, 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 we appreciate been, you. This has been a good time. It, it's been, been a good time. time. <laughs> it's been a good time, but damn it, it could have been better. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why we're gonna leave this meat on the bone right now because see this. Yeah, we could. We, we could definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, because we gotta talk about you know how how I get them to breed and how I get them to feed and all that stuff. You know, yeah, we also about I got some questions for you about feeders. shows. Yeah. yeah, I got some yeah. questions for you about the era. I got a yeah. lot of questions for you. Yeah. All right, uh, well, let's do it. Uh, just, just get send me a text and tell me a date, and I'll be ready for it, and I'll I'll send you some more pictures. Okay, yeah, we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you about it tomorrow. Actually, we'll be on it. Tomorrow. All right, I, I, I'm All gonna right. send Kino. I'm gonna send Kino a picture of my girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just don't tell Please me. do that. Thank you. Don't don't tell 
don't don't tell my wife about it. She doesn't like to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think she would. I don't think that she would, Chuck. <laughs> don't, I, I don't think she's gonna be okay gonna with this. Ass, you know what I'm saying? This would be a this would be you know just like brother Vogel, brother Morgan thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Brother, it, brother, sounds like a, it sounds like a oh, white okay. John Shakira thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, be right now. She's not here. She's not here. She's uh, she's up taking care of her parents and, and out of the house for for the month or so. So I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. Okay, yeah, I right. hope she don't show up and beat you up We're next month. Good. No, see what we need to do is no we, that's why I said Mark. We need to get him back on within the month so he can he can be you know the free chuck. We don't want him to be reserved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we we don't don't, don't wait too hard. Show, I won't know? be able. To, I won't be able to talk about certain things if we wait too long. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, we don't we, want you we, to yeah. like tossed it on the show. Either. All right, Chuck. We appreciate you. <laughs> this has been this has been a Conjo Bar Room. Listen, part two is coming up soon. This uh, part one. We'll put that's it out. Part one. Yeah, this is just this is part one. Um, All that's good. us for tonight. And uh, thank y'all for stopping by. Peace. Yeah. Thank Chuck. Thank the Bar Room members. Everybody. Stay healthy. Yes. Peace. Bye.